Hi, this video tells the story, briefly, of the first brand of beer to ever be sold in a can. The first beer cans were quite a bit different than the ones we know today. They were heavy gauge tin cans that were coated on the inside and had a flat welded top and there was no sort of tab on top to open them as such a technology had yet to be invented. Well, just getting the beer into a can in the first place was enough of a feat. The first beer to ever be sold in a can was Kruger's Finest Beer, brewed by the Gottfried Kruger Brewing Company of Newark, New Jersey. They went on sale in Richmond, Virginia, shortly after the repeal of Prohibition. The initial shipment was only 2,000 cans. These first cans were made by the American Can Company, or CanCo, out of Pacific Grove, California. This company had started trying to develop beer cans as far back as 1909, but they gave up fairly soon. As I said, getting beer into a can was a feat. Why? Well, beer can generate a pressure of over 80 pounds per square inch inside the can, which was well over what the cans of the time could withstand. Anything over 40 pounds per square inch pressure could burst the cans or cause them to spring leaks. And of course, beer is acidic, so early cans would have been corroded by the beer infusing it with a god-awful tin can taste. So the company had to lick the strength problem and the lining problem to protect the inside of the can, or rather to protect the beer from the inside of the can, both really, and they had to do this while keeping the cans inexpensive. After all, glass bottles were well established and had none of these problems. Plus, many of them could be returned and refilled. And to make the problems worse, after this initial effort, prohibition came into effect, so that subsequent efforts, like the one that began in 1921, were done with a very limited potential market. However, their foresight paid off, and they did solve the pressure and lining problem, making the CanCo ready to serve the first company wanting to can beer after prohibition was lifted. These cans would have been quite a change to existing beer customers. They were difficult to open, as all cans of the day were. Although one advantage was that the entire top did not have to be removed as with canned foods. You just needed to punch a hole to drink out of. To do this, the customer had to use something sharp like a church key style can opener. The cans devoted a lot of label space to telling customers how to open them, with two pictorial instructions and a picture of a can opener on one side. For this reason, these early beer cans were called instructional cans. It was a fairly bold move for Gottfried Kruger to market beer in a can. Customer acceptance was certainly an issue and there was every reason for the company to expect the new cans to fail. And this answers the question as to why a brewer based in Newark, New Jersey shipped its first cans all the way to Virginia. This was far enough away from the brewery's home market to keep them fairly disassociated from the product if it were to fail so that the company's reputation on the northeastern seaboard was not affected. However, the cans were a success, and many customers seemed to like them better than bottles. Therefore, the company followed Kruger's finest beer in 1935 by putting Kruger's cream ale into cans. The success of these first canned beers was enough to have many other brewers in the U.S. and abroad to follow suit. In August 1935, Pabst began canning beer, that was the first major brewery to do so. Then, a month later, they were followed by Schlitz. By the end of that year, there were 37 canned American beers. Soon, a rival to the can company's cans, which they named Keglined, was developed by Crown Cork and Seal Company, which perfected a process that allowed them to produce a two-piece steel can with a neck and a crown cap the ubiquitous standard bottle cap that the company had invented, the kind we still see today on beer bottles. They called this the crown tainer, and it held a quart of beer. These cans could be opened more like a bottle. The first aluminum beer cans appeared in 1958, and the first cans with ring top openings appeared in 1965, which had a metal loop that was pulled to remove a metal tab, creating an opening to drink out of.